In early 2019, in partnership with Soisambu Conservancy, IBIS Tours, Jackson's African Safaris, and Artists for Conservation, I had the chance to join a safari hosted by artist Guy Coombs. So going on a safari with Guy means that you stop and take pictures of birds. A lot. Like a lot of birds. So if you like birds, this is the safari for you. I try and uh, restrict it to the nice, bright, shiny ones. A part of the proceeds donated to mobile cattle enclosures called BOMAs at Soisambu Conservancy. Along with a wonderful group of friends, Guy and I embarked on a thrilling journey into the heart of Kenya to discover the culture and wildlife of Africa, all while giving back a little to this amazing place. We begin our adventures in Nairobi, where we're to visit giraffe and elephant sanctuaries within the bustling city. So whatever we are using to feed the giraffe is in form of pellets and it is made up of maize, grass and molasses. So the giraffes like it. Most of the giraffes that you see in the US in captivity are Rothschild giraffes because they, they, they're easy, they're much easier in captivity. Um, so the other two different subspecies are the Maasai giraffe and the reticulated. Um, when we're up in Samburu, we will see reticulated giraffe, and when we're in the Mara, we'll see the Maasai giraffe. Do that again. I want to do it. I want to do it. I think I got it. Probably not. I'm not going to quite do One more time. Time. You'll see them out in the wild on Soy Sambu. That's the only kind of giraffe that we have there. Um, and yeah, it's been, been very successful. The, the issues, as you know, with, uh, with uh, Rothschild giraffe conservation is, is habitat loss because um, their main food, they like the big tall acacia trees and, and a lot of those you'll find in like, areas that are very fertile and good for farming. Uh, we're at the Daphne Sheldrick uh, Elephant Orphanage, which was set up in the 1970s when I was growing up in Nairobi. Um, I came here, Daphne Sheldrick was a good friend of my parents, and I came here when I was six or seven when Daphne had some of her first orphans here. Um, but now, as you can see, I mean, there must be 2,000 people, three, two, one or 2,000 people that, that visited today. All of them are donating money to the, the Sheldrick Trust. Um, all of that money goes to elephant conservation. Our second destination is Elephant Bedroom in Samburu National Reserve. Why do they call it Elephant Bedroom? Well, you're about to learn. Jumbo! Jumbo! That's good. Welcome to Elephant Bedroom. This will be your home for the next uh, three weeks. Are you aware of that? <laughs> okay, done deal. <laughs> so please feel welcome and feel an Elephant Bedroom. My name is Julius. It's only, I'd say, what, 50 feet away? So. All the guests on the safari arrived three nights ago and already we're, we're down by a river with an elephant 50 feet away, just, just hanging out. Wow, yeah. oh, look at the elephant. <laughs> um, we're all off for a game drive, um, which is, uh, game drive is a really stupid expression, which was kind of, um, it's, it's a hunting thing, and I don't know why it's kind of, survived into modern kind of photographic tourism, but it has. And uh, it's just a generic term for going out and looking at animals. Uh, we've got some baboons over there, so we've already started seeing seeing stuff. And we had an elephant by the tent this morning. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's non-stop around here. There's some animals right there. <laughs>
Yeah, for quite some time, like for two or three years, they keep on disappearing. Pole pole it comes time to time, but this time round, this afternoon, there are so many. Remember yesterday we drove through here, there was nothing. This morning we did, there was nothing. Seems these guys are ar arriving. Maybe from tomorrow there might be more. Elephant Bedroom Camp is world famous for close-up encounters. Every day, curious pachyderms visit our tents. With luxury amenities, incredible food, and friendly locals, I think Guy and I are pretty much ready to move in. visit to a Samburu village and we've just been on a nice little hike with some of the old ladies of the village who have serenaded us on the way. Materials to make the jewellery with. Um, the wraps that they wear around their bodies are not part of the traditional dress but uh, the like the red the red cloth is more traditional for samba in my side The roads in Kenya are very well maintained. So we're just, uh, we're on our way to Soisambu and we're going past, uh, this is Solio Ranch and um, there's some white rhino that are lying down Then we just thought we'd stop and take a few pictures of them. After several days of close-up encounters with elephants, lions, and everything in between, we bid a sad farewell to Elephant Bedroom. However, it's time to visit Guy's home, Soy Sambu. Morning, everybody. Uh, Guy and Will here. We're uh, back at uh, boring old Soy Sambu. Yawn. Soy Sambu Conservancy is a 48,000-acre working cattle ranch and conservation area home to more than 450 bird species and 10,000 mammals of over 50 species, including the endangered Rothschild giraffe. Their current concern is that a pride of lions have moved in, which is where the Boma project comes in. But before we visit the Bomas, time to soak up some nature. Uh, we are out on an early game drive. Um, the sun's just coming up. Um, we thought we'd come down this way because the hyena den is just down the bottom here. And, um, but it's so cold this morning that I don't think anyone is out because it's freezing cold. <laughs>
Uh, we've just uh, entered Lake Nakura National Park. Um, it's coming through the Enderic Gate, which is the nearest gate to Soisambu. Um, and Soisambu actually um, is right next door to Lake Nakura National Park. Um, uh, we have a, a, a large area of Soisambu that is boundaried by the park. Um, and so we work in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Services on many issues um, involving conservation, um, human wildlife conflict, livestock wildlife conflict. Um, my father was director of Rhino Rescue, which uh, was the fundraising organization that put fences all around this park um, and was, was what enabled um, rhinos to be translocated here, uh, both black and white rhinos, and they've had a very successful program of, of those rhinos breeding and increasing numbers. I get excited for rhinos. He gets excited for this little dude over here. Our home while we're staying in Soisambu is Mbweha Camp, bordering right along Nakuru Park. Again, you're right in among the animals, but with the benefit of comfortable, luxurious cabins and five-star cuisine. We're at the Bomas. Uh, this, this one here is uh, currently operational and full of cattle. And if you look here, you can see where um, the boma was previously and got moved. And the whole idea of mo <coughs> these mobile bomas is that um, you keep them one, in one place for about two to three months. The reason that we, we need to have these bomas is so that we can have these, the lions at Soisambu. Um, this, this will all help with more BOMAs and uh, you also want to help our school program. Um, and you look at this huge place and you, you wonder why we need any help, but we, we really need help all the time. And especially with these BOMAs, and we saw the lions today in Nakuru, we want to be able to have people coming to Soisambu and seeing lions just like that. And, uh, it's really, <clears throat> it means a lot. It means the world. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Something that can be done that's good both for people who are, you know, trying to raise livestock and people who are trying to protect the animals. Kind of does both. Helps the land a little bit as well. So it's it's kind of a win for everybody. It just makes us feel so special to be part of this project and see this thing grow. Anything that can help Africa stay as natural and as beautiful as it is, and at the same time helps both the animals and the people. It can do nothing but, you know, just 
make the world better. Yeah, well, they, yeah, the guys kind of separate them as they're coming in, and then the babies all go into the little one next oh, to it. Oh, and, and that's where the um, and it encourages the mothers to lactate more, so more milk. Of course. Yeah. Who learned that? How'd they figure that out? That's like centuries of cattle yeah. management. So like. <laughs> <laughs> that evolution I, think, or I think the Maasai worked the that out a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, automatically not <laughs> The BOMA, I think, is a really successful strategy to um, address the needs, the basic needs of people. Understanding from Guy's point of view how it really helps while allowing lions to be here and for us to come and see them. It's a wonderful step to make this um, planet happy. It's been so inspiring doing this safari with all these talented artistic people and um, I just am so happy to have done this. It's time to say goodbye to this magical place, but our adventures are not complete. It's time to head back on the road as the wildebeest migration is on and to see it we need to head to the Maasai Mara. To close this adventure out, I think we'll let the wildlife do the talking. We're in the Maasai Mara. Uh, we're looking at some elephants and uh, we've just seen um, a coalition of five cheetah brothers <laughs> and um, it's, it's beautiful. Our final home away from home is Hippolyquani Mara Camp. Luxury tents? Check. Ride by the animals? Check. Amazing bridge over the river? Eh, double check. And just like that, our adventure comes to an end. A huge thanks to Artists for Conservation, Guy Combs, Cat Combs, Jackson's African Safaris, and Ibis Tour for making this all possible. If you want to go on this amazing adventure, head over to Artists for Conservation and be part of next year's safari. Have a dream adventure and help save the planet a little while you do it. <laughs>